Okay, let me ask you something. Have you ever experienced a notebook that makes you want to write just to write because you love the feel of the pages and the paper that much? And the perfect combination with the paper and your pens or fountain pens is just blissful? <laughs> Well, that is the case with this notebook, you guys. Let me share with you why I love this notebook so much. Now, first though, I want to say that I have never even heard of this brand, Good Ink Impressions. Beautiful cover, this color caught my eye this past weekend as I was shopping at my Barnes & Noble bookstore. This was right here on the top shelf, as some of you may have seen in just my last video I posted a couple days ago in that vlog. I saw this and this caught my eye tomo river paper i said oh okay i know that's popular and um here in the united states in our bookstores that aren't specialized in stationery we this is not very common like you don't see tomo river paper in your you know at your local you know target or walmart or barnes and noble so when i saw this i just had to take a closer look and Right away, what caught my eye was that it said cream. Cream pages, which I love the, that cream eggshell color. And it said 68 GSM, which really sparked my interest because from all of the Tomoe River paper that I've experienced within my collection and from fountain pen enthusiasts that rave about it, they um it's the 52 gsm and i believe that's what hobonichi was using too or is still using the 52 gsm so the paper is thinner it is lighter i mean can you hear how light this is it's almost so fine it's almost like bible paper and that's why a lot of people love it because it's very very thin but you can fit a good amount of pages in this bound notebook this is 400 pages by galen leather whereas with your normal uh you know standard uh notebook this would be what 400 pages looks like this is the midori a5 well i cut it down but it's a5 and you can see it's double the thickness okay but i love their paper the midori paper for the reasons that i'm going to share uh with this good ink impressions the cream pages it holds up really well with darker inks fountain pen inks and then even um like if i want to watercolor or if i want to use certain types of like inks or stamps um or yeah like watercolor where's my inks did i use okay yeah it, it, it just holds up really really well but as you saw it's thicker and I just, uh, for me, for my brain and for my preference, I mean, I'm a very, what's the word? I'm a very tactile person. So the way certain things feel, they either click with me or they don't. And while I can appreciate the 52 GSM when it comes to the Tomei River paper, it just did not click with me. This paper almost feels, um, I can't explain it. It, it. it doesn't feel like damp or heavy. <laughs> I can't explain it. It just feels... It's so thin and like smooth, it comes off, especially when I use like ballpoint pens, it just comes off different than what I'm used to, which um, I understand the formula is, you know, set up to be mainly catering to fountain pen inks where it can just glide on here. And it does that beautifully. However, because this paper is so thin, you could see, okay, you could see all of the writings on the other side i even did a test down here to see if it would you know kind of go against my adhd brain and it it does bother me a little bit so this i'm not even using dark ink this is ancient copper this tan ink but i can still see it on the other side so i imagine if i use black and black on the other side just seeing that would really um bother me so i never really could get into Tomoe River paper because of the thinness. And I never, I don't, yeah, I've never experienced 68 GSM until now, until I saw this. It does hold up beautifully with fountain pen inks, gel inks. I even did watercolor samples here. I had a field day, you guys. I was just, I busted out all of my inks, my little humble ink collection 
I don't have many, but I do have my favorites that I use on a regular. My Ancient Copper, my Writer's Blood, um, my Heart of Dark, okay, really, these are the ones that I've been using. My Heart of Darkness, Ink of Witch by Bungle Box with my Caveco, and then Silent Night by Caveco. So I tested all of these out, and you cannot even see the ghosting like on the other side. I even wrote on here to see if it would come over on this side and it does not. Yeah, the ghosting is like almost non-existent. But this paper doesn't feel, it doesn't feel too, too thin where it's almost fragile or I, I'm afraid it might tear. It's not too, too thick like the Midori where it gets kind of like heavy. It's just like the right size. I feel like I'm um, Goldilocks with the three bears, right? It's like, it's not too soft. It's not too heavy. It, this is just perfect for me so i don't know where i've been apparently i've been hiding under a rock i didn't even know 68 gsm was um is it widely common or available i'm sure someone in the community will let me know but i think not a lot of people talk about it so i was not aware of this and a lot of you were surprised i never heard of this brand good ink impressions apparently it's a small brand it's um it's a small I think they start off at Etsy from what I've seen from your messages and your comments. Maybe they start off on Etsy like years ago. So I'm really happy to see that they have, you know, gotten a contract with Barnes and Noble. But I went on their website to see if they had this A5 in a blank version because I do enjoy like blank pages and uh, similar to like my Cosmo Air. In my previous videos that I, there was a video I showed that are better alternatives to a moleskin. And these were like my top two favorite notebooks of all time, the Claire Fontaine, because of the same reason, rounded corners, cream, kind of eggshell color, and it has this elastic closure. But they're not red, like they're not always available. So I again, I use this like very very sparingly because not all retailers sell this, and the ones that do, they're like sold out when I need another one. And then this Cosmo Air, this was beautiful. I loved this because even though the pages aren't quite cream, it's not quite bleach white either. It's, um, this is more like an eggshell, like a white eggshell color, but the rounded corners and my fountain pen inks showed up beautifully on this paper. This, okay, look at this Hari. This is so interesting because this Hari by Noodlers look how it shows up on my good impressions i mean they're both just as beautiful but they're just so different see on this the hari is this hari oh yeah it was okay see it's wait that's so interesting maybe i missed no that is the hari yeah see here it shows up like a dusty pink and then on the cosmo it shows up almost like a um like a pomegranate purple color like a berry, like a blackberry almost. It's so interesting. And that's what is so fun about using fountain pen inks with different paper combinations. You get different results. That is very true when it comes to, um, I feel like one of my chameleon colors, like a shifter is the Sailor Seki. When I first got this ink, it, to me, it looked like a very faint purple, but then in certain, like lighting, you could see there's like this green hue underneath it. And then in some paper, like on some paper, it looks more like gray. So it's such an interesting color. But this Cosmo Air, I really loved this paper and I was gonna use this regularly until I found out that they discontinued this. So now I'm, I don't wanna use waste this because they no longer make this. Oh, is this Sailor? Oh yeah, this is the Sailor Seki. So you could see here on the Cosmo, wow, it brought out like a little bit of the purple, the green, some of the gray undertones, like such a shifter here. So this paper, this is not Tomoe River paper, um, but I loved how it just brought out the colors. Like this Earl Grey, this Diamine Earl Grey, look how stunning that is. The Noodler's Lexington uh, Gray. This Vert Empire, wow, this came out very mossy. This is also Sailor Seki. Oh no, that's, this is Sailor Seki. What is this, Sailor Haha? Ha? Okay, yeah. Okay, 
So I feel like this is a perfect blend of these two that I love so much. And this paper, it works beautifully with like the, the pressure and the firmness that I use with my fountain pens. I would say, am I a heavy writer? Yeah, I, I think I would say I'm somewhat of a, a heavy like pressure writer, especially when I'm like really, really focused. And that's another beautiful thing about using fountain pens. You don't have to press down as hard. I think that's just years of training of me using <laughs> cheap ballpoint pens throughout the years. You don't have to be as firm with fountain pens, but um, medium nibs are my new favorite. I was into fine nibs, especially with the Twisby um, Diamond, not the Diamond, Diamond 580 paired with Heart of Darkness. This was a beautiful combination where it didn't come out too dry or too wet. It was perfect. But then this Caveco, um, this is a Bungu Box exclusive. The Bungu Box Little Witch Caveco medium nib. Wow, I just love how this glides. I think, did I do an ink test right here? You guys, this nib, it's so smooth. Like, I did I, is this inked? Yeah, okay. It's so smooth and this ink, so beautiful like this notebook has really elevated my fountain pen love because it's just so fun like I just wrote random stuff just so I can write in this notebook because I love the experience of writing in this notebook especially with uh, my Banu medium nib in this ancient copper I love ancient copper this tan color it's so fitting with this cover but let me um let me do just kind of like a little scribble here it's just like let me like it's just so smooth i just love it so with all that said i'm not a professional fountain pen paper reviewer you guys but um a lot of a lot of you guys wanted me to go more in depth of this notebook give my impressions of it because i've shared it all throughout my instagram stories and my vlog and you guys are like what is this notebook and here it is so this is how it comes it has a little bookmark and there's no back pocket or elastic that's totally fine but I'm just pointing that out here. And it does retail for $26.99. I found this again at my Barnes and Noble. You can find, um, I thought you could find this on their website, but I went on their website and they don't have this exact notebook. Maybe they will, maybe they did. But at this time, at this video, by the, you know, when, as you're watching this video, I could not find it. I found they had A5 notebooks, but it wasn't exactly this 192 page uh, cream 68 GSM in the rules with this color. So maybe it's there, let me know. Maybe I overlooked it, um, but definitely you know, reach out to them or go on their website. They do have other colors of this cover, but the different colors are going to be different page styles. So they have a grid, they have a dot, and then they do have plain, but it's just not in the 68 GSM. It's only in the 52, unfortunately for me. But check this out if you guys are like me and you could really never click with the 52 GSM Tomei River paper, but you do enjoy using darker like gel inks or um, you know, you're know you just getting into fountain pens. Maybe you like to use broad nibs or medium nibs, but you're looking for like a really good paper uh, for the qualities that I mentioned, cream color, versatile with other mediums, um, not too thin, not too thick, not too bulky, but also the, the page designs, like they're so faint, like these lines, I totally forgot they were even, even there. You can't, you can hardly see them against my watercolor samples. I went out, when I came home, I only purchased this, but I love this notebook so much. I went out and I got the last two notebooks that were at my location. And the funny thing is, you know, every bookstore is going to vary, every Barnes and Noble is going to vary, but 
for me, this one I got in Las Vegas at one of their locations, and it was right there in their stationery section. So that's what that was easy to to find because it was with the other Leuchterm and Moleskins and leather, you know, Italian covers that they have. But th those other two that I got at my other location, they were hidden. And I only knew that they were in stock because if you go on the Barnes & Noble website, you can um, type this in and type in your zip code and it will let you know if it's in stock. That's what I always do before I make a trip down there. If any book is in stock, it's it showed that these were in stock. I looked all over that stationary section I could not find it and then I almost gave up and I was going to ask the cashier to help me but I noticed that the last these last two they were literally in the front by the cashier but they had a stand and the stand was facing the cashier like this so I'm walking like this all over the stationary section and I could not see it because the stand these notebooks were facing the cashier. So if I'm shopping, there was no way that I was going to see this unless I was already checking out, okay? Um, some of you, if you frequent Barnes & Noble, you know what I'm talking about. It's like by the checkout area. So each store is going to vary with where they, where they have these located. Recommend going on their website, typing in your zip code, but you can just order them online. I think they're the same price. So that is that. I, I'm sorry, I did not want to make this too, too long, but um, a lot of you guys, felt my excitement over these notebooks and you want to know what the hype was why is michelle loving this notebook so much so again i'm not a professional like fountain pen user i've only been using these for five years but i definitely definitely will be using my fountain pens more and journaling more because i love this notebook so much like i asked in the beginning have you experienced a notebook that you just love so much that you just want to write because you love it and you guys know that I enjoy, you know, good notebooks when I want to just doodle, dump my thoughts. But this notebook makes me really want to like take my time and just slowly draft out like my thoughts and pour into these pages. So for that reason, I'm trying to think like, okay, what can I journal about where I want to write a lot? Because sometimes my days are not very eventful where i'm going to write pages and pages full however i am passionate about my books so you guys know i've really been entering my reading era i'm all into my books i've been getting into classics and i think i'm going to turn this into my book journal because i can definitely go on and on and on about a really good book that i am enjoying i can talk about you know my impressions any plot twists the characters, how I felt before, middle, end. So I have some books that I'm going to be getting into. Um, there are certain things too that when I find good, um, not good, but when I find certain, you know, phrases or sentences, I want to capture them in my journal. So I figured this is a perfect way to capture all the things that I want to remember and put them into um, a reading journal. This book, The Lonesome Dove, I'm slowly getting into this because a friend told me that this was one of Stephen King's favorite books. So I said, oh, wow, if Stephen King loved this book. Then I'm definitely going to love this book. And um, apparently it's very, very popular. So, um, I'm excited to read this and just right here in the beginning, okay? Just things like this, because some of you have asked like, what do you write in a, in a reading journal? You can write whatever you want. For me, I like to also um, tag and highlight and write certain, you know, sentences or phrases, um, epilogues, just whatever you resonates with you within a journal. So I'm definitely going to add this within the journal. So I have plenty of reasonings to use this up. Let me know if you guys have had experience with 50 or not 50, uh, 68 GSM Tomoe River paper, and maybe specifically from good ink pressions, um, or just maybe other brands help me out. Maybe are there other brands that have 68 GSM that you recommend that are cream as well, or that offer the same large amount of pages. That's another thing too with this company. Um, when I went on their website, from what I was looking for, a lot of their notebooks were staple bound. So maybe that's why too, um, I never really 
was found them because I I typically don't um, go for like staple bound notebooks because I write so much and I would burn through those inserts so quickly. So I prefer a notebook that has at least, you know, up upper towards like the 200, 300, 400 pages. I might even task myself with a little project and I don't know this 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 is too beautiful to do this but I was even thinking about combining taking the cover off and gluing and come well, taking this out and making this into one notebook oh my gosh should I do that I don't know but then I just saw a comment one of you guys commented in my community um, section in the community post that you heard that this was going to be discontinued and they were just selling what was left of this batch. If so, I need to know. We all need to know so we can stock up. I need to get more of these. If, if they are going to run out of this, if they're trying to get rid of this batch, I will help them get rid of it by buying it up. Okay, so that is that, you guys. Definitely check this out if you have a Barnes & Noble in your area or go on their website. Or if you also like to use medium nibs, broad nibs, dark inks, maybe you like to use a little bit of everything, ink, paper, paint, ink, paper, of course it's paper, ink, paint, markers, and it's, it has this nice, and again, this paper, it's just like not too thin, not too thick, it's just perfect. Okay, that that's it, that's all I have to say. Oh, it's interesting how it has like this cutoff point. Okay. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.